let <coughs> the peace, love, and blessing of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Amen. Worship God on earth as it is done in heaven. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Second lesson, Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Golden text, Revelation chapter 11, verses 16 to 17. Quote, Brethren, what is read to you is the theme of our revelation today. I have always told you, and I am repeating now, that whenever you come in here, you should focus your attention on this red garment and listen and receive the gospel of God with rapt attention. The scriptures have said, Wherever your treasure is, your heart must be there also. If you look at the rest of this red garment, the vesture dipped in blood, how reddish it is, the blood of the Son of God, invariably the Word of God, it means that your life is completely absorbed in the words of God and you, you receive assimilate and practice the words of life you will be versed in the words of God who is worthy to open the book after reading the three texts you will know exactly what I am about to reveal unto you and the entire world today and John the Divine said I saw a strong angel holding up a small book and proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof he continued and no man in heaven nor on earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon John said I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon and one of the elders told him not to weep for behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed to open the book and to loose them the seven seals thereof only the lion of the tribe of judah was who was slain the word of god is like the carcass of an alligator. Why was it that there was no other soul in there was no other soul to open the book? You have heard the song which was rendered by the elders saying You are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for you were slain and has redeemed us unto God by your blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. You will notice that God has never committed any mistake in his work. Wherever he keeps you, be satisfied and Rest, be content, that should be your sufficiency. Do not strive to go beyond that point. You will come across a man who reads the scriptures from January to December, year in, year out, and you and yet cannot even comprehend what is written in the bible since it has not been written about them 
how to worship God. Be it known to the NTA officials already here, the radio people and media houses yet planning to come here, and the entire world, both in heaven and on earth, that I want to reveal the recondite wisdom of God to you and them. Are you not surprised that John the Baptist taught his disciples how to pray? And the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ went to their master and asked him to teach them how to pray, as John also taught his disciples. A great many people think that worshipping God consists in building a big cathedral and remaining inside there to offer prayers. That is erroneous. Others think that worshipping God consists in furnishing the church building heavily and overlaying everywhere with gold. This is also erroneous. Other the others still think that to worship God is to light the candle, burn incense and sprinkle costly perfume. This is also not true. Some others think it consists in going on pilgrimage to Jerusalem, the holy city, or going to worship on top of mountains or in the wilderness or at the waterside or on the river bank. But this is erroneous also. The true worshippers must worship God in spirit and in truth. Do you recollect the conversation between our Lord Jesus Christ and the Samaritan woman? The Samaritan woman told our Lord Jesus Christ, Our fathers worship on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem, is a place where men ought to worship. Our Lord Jesus Christ told her, Woman, believe me, you worship what you do not know, but we worship what we know because salvation is of the Jews. He continued, he continued to tell her, Believe me, for the hour is coming and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship Him. And who are those who worship God in spirit and in truth? Is it climbing up to a very high mountain and spreading out your hand? Or is, is it in erecting a mighty cathedral? Or in wearing gorgeous and dazzling garments? or in shouting or in preparate in preparing delicious food for people to eat or is it in singing and praying brethren can you realize all the wisdom of god has eluded men and how numerical counting has confusion and apparition when the disciples asked the Lord to teach them how to pray, and he taught them when they pray to say, Lord, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ is a typical example of an exemplary character. It was also the duty of angels to worship God and that is why I have mentioned them as a typical example. God does not require our money or our garments or any other thing, but he requires that what is done in heaven must also be done on earth. It is an, it is an empty worship when you find somebody holding his hands together and shouting, O oh, Jehovah, Jehovah Jah, I would have you close your mouth because it is an insult. Others sit at, sit at a kimber 
as if they were equal with God? Do you think that somebody can stand erect and worship God? Or do you think that somebody sits upright and at a kimber to worship God? Let us do on earth as it is done in heaven. Our sermon today will not be long because the people of the world accuse you for worshipping a man being, for worshipping a human being, and you yourself do not know what you do. But today, everything has been laid bare before you that it should be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Is it not what you see today? What you see done in brotherhood? They do not know, they do not bow down their heads. If they do it, they confess they do it for Olumba, Olumba, Abu. To whom do you do it? This is, however, the correct method of worshipping God that is required by Him because it is what is done in heaven that must be done on earth. This is a very short sermon delivered to you and it will be quite understandable to all because when you go out from my presence you knock your head on the ground and say you are knocking onto a lumbo lumbo boo. Today this explanation is given to all the inhabitants of the world so that those who did not know may know now. Heaven is God's throne and earth is his footstool. You intend to build a house for God. What type of house will you build for him? Did not his hands make everything in the world? When you consider that you are going to celebrate the feast for God, what type of meat will you use because he created all the animals? You argue that you want to sing. What type of music will you render? For he gives the voice and he is a super choir master. If you argue that you will offer prayer, what type of prayers will you offer? For he gives the voice and also offers prayers himself. You contrive in your heart that you want to give money to God. What type and how much money? Whereas he owns all the currencies in the world. The only duty we have to perform is to knock our heads on the ground. This method of worship is more solemn than anything else before God because it is exactly what the angels are doing in heaven. That prayer taught by our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples is today fulfilled in you. Lord, thy kingdom come. Let us do on earth as it is done in heaven. What we now do on earth is exactly what is done in heaven. There is, therefore, no difference between your action and the practice of the elders in the throne of God. That prayer is fulfilled in you today as all of you cover your faces on the ground, knock your heads on the ground, kowtow and prostrate on the ground as is being done by the angel. This reveals to you the proper method of worshipping God. There is no other method of worshipping God which is pleasing in his sight. It does not all consist of singing and praying, but when you knock your head, you are bestowed with grace, and as you kneel, you are bestowed with peace. The kingdoms of this world 
have become the kingdom of God. Brethren, test and see. Knock your head wherever you find yourself, whether it is on the road or inside the forest. That is why it is said that it is not only when you go to the mountain you can worship God, but that true worshippers must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Wherever you are, just kneel down and knock your head on the ground for your Father. This is so because the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of Jehovah God and His Christ. That method of worshipping by knocking heads by the angels and elders must be adopted by all of us because it is the right way of worshipping God. Whatever are done throughout the whole world are not the correct way to worship God, but this is the proper method of worshipping God. Always kneel, kneel down and knock your head. Brethren, realize that there is no other method. And man has never pleased God. Because hitherto his prayer was not fulfilled. But now at this end of time, in the 20th century, your prayers are being fulfilled in a very simple way. Some people argue that it is because they pay tithes. That is why God loves them. It is not payment of tithe. But by this proper way of worship, since it is the exact thing that is done in heaven, from time to time you have to fall down on the ground, kneel, knock your head, kowtow, prostrate, cover your face on the ground and worship your God. Apart from this, there is no other method of worship which is so pleasing in the sight of God. Do not knock your head to man, but to God. If in the past you used to feel that you knock your head for man, or for Ulumba Ulumba Obu, or for any spirit, but today you have realized that you knock your head for the Almighty God who created heaven and earth, water, dry land, mountain, and other things. And this is pleasing in His sight, as there is no other method of worshipping Him. Whatever is your station in life, be you a man or a woman, a child or an adult or an old man, any person who wants to worship God must kneel down and knock his head on the ground, for this is the only way to worship him. It is said, for the Father seeks such to worship him. He does not want others. He does not consider your dress, your behavior, your money. But the moment you kneel down and knock your head, you have worshipped him. When you seek after wisdom or peace or anything, kneel down and knock your head three times on the ground and all problems subside. Believe fervently that you are kneeling before him and knocking your head at his feet and this is the greatest, the first and the foremost honor done him by angel, which all men and other creatures should also bestow on him. It is not expedient that you should look upward when you are worshipping God, or that you should look steadfastly on any person or thing, but you have always to stoop down your head as a mark of great honor to your God. Wisdom of the truth revealed. 
Has our Lord Jesus Christ not told you? I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Albeit when the Comforter, even the Spirit of Truth comes, He will lead you unto the accurate wisdom of truth. Brethren, what you see is that wisdom of the truth. I do not need your money, motor cars, clothes, and shoes, but I require that you should kneel down, knock your head, and cover your face on the ground, because this is the only way of worshiping God. For all angels cover their, head, their faces on the ground. It means that men and angels are one in this observance, so that what is done in heaven is also done on earth. Brethren, the inhabitants of the world are to be pitied. The entire mankind is in a very pathetic position because they have eyes but cannot see and they have ears but cannot hear. At any time people see you worship the true God, they will accuse you of worshiping man, armor made, or an apparition. There is no other way of worshiping God. It is therefore incumbent upon all the inhabitants of the world, the Christians, the Muslims, the Judaists, the Buddhists, the Hindus, and the other religious and the other religions of the world as well as angels to worship God by kneeling down and knocking their heads so that what is done in heaven must be done on earth. And this method must be adopted by people throughout all ages. Angels worship God with their faces downward. All the angels, Gabriel, Michael, Raphael and others, always kneel down with their faces down because there is no other method of worshipping. This method must therefore be adopted by all children of God throughout the world, in heaven and on earth throughout all ages. In your own case, this story is different because you are always pretending, knocking your head and stooping down once in every three hours, but after that you look up, staring at my face. This is at variance with the angelic practice of covering their faces on the ground. So, wherever you may be, you must always kneel and knock your head, keeping your faces downward having known that you are always in the presence of God. I have always told you that you are in heaven because all what is done in heaven is now being done on earth. Does it serve any useful purpose for any person to go to the mountain or to climb down to the deep or to go to the water side whereas there is only one method of worshipping him wherever you are. Before honor is humility. It is not uncommon to find a great many people asking why brotherhood is so loved by God. The answer is that it is only in brotherhood that God is worshipped in the proper way. It is only in brotherhood that people kneel down and bow down their heads and it is incumbent upon all the inhabitants of the world in heaven and in earth to adopt the same method of worship no matter their station in life whether they are kings, emperors or presidents or governors or millionaires Whatever they may be, it is now covenant head that you must constantly kneel down and knock your heads. And a scriptural passage attests to the fact that whosoever exalts himself will be abased, but whosoever humbles himself will be exalted. Earth is the footstool of God. 
Let not your heart be troubled, whether or not you have money, whether or not you are highly educated, but since you have been endowed with these words of life from now on, rest assured that there is no other method of worshipping God. Some of you, when you come in here to worship, you place a piece of cloth or newspaper on which to knock your head. Others knock on the hem of their sutan. Others on their Bible or hymn books. And others still on top of the pew. Does it mean that the piece of cloth or newspaper or Bible or hymn book or sutan is better than the ground whereas the earth is the footstool of God? It is said, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Do you not know that when you knock your head on the ground, you are knocking at the foot of God? Indeed, God has really loved you at this end of time because that prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ is now fulfilled in you. Abraham did, Abraham did attempt to find the proper way of worshipping God, but he could not find it. Isaac, Jacob, and all the patriarchs toiled much to know the proper method of worshipping God, but they were not successful. It was not yet the fullness of time. Some people built altars and carried their cows there to offer as, as sacrifices. Others built certain temples inside which they offered their sacrifices. These were not acceptable. Wherever you find yourself, kneel down and knock your head three times for your father. Whether you are on the highway or on an expressway or inside the court or at the marketplace or inside the bush. The leader also knocks his head. Example is the best teacher. Why this gospel is delivered to you today is to strengthen your faith because a great many of you feign shameful when you knock your head because you are afraid that people will accuse you of worshipping a man. But you notice that I myself knock my head times without number which indicates most conclusively that I am worshipping the one true God the creator of heaven and earth. In the past, people were accusing you of worshipping a man, a human being. When you knock your head, they accuse you out of sheer ignorance. But now they see clearly through their television sets that I also knock my head several times each time we are televised an indication that knocking the head is the most appropriate method of worshipping God. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. If our Lord Jesus Christ knocked his head on the ground, who are you to refuse knocking your head? He is the author and perfecter of our faith. He is the foundation stone on which every person stands. Unless you worship via this method, you have not done anything. God does not require your money, high education, children, and wealth, but He requires that you worship Him by knocking your head for Him as your Creator and Father. Heaven and earth belong to him and are in his hands. There is no use building a church or a house. For what kind of house will you build? But wherever you find yourself, he is there and you knock your heads unto him. He is with you always, and so, on the road, 
inside your house, in the field, inside the vehicle you are traveling, just kneel down and knock your head for him. That is what he requires and that is what is done in heaven. It must also be done on earth. In God we live and love. In God we live and move and have our beings. The same declaration which Paul made when he was in Athens and saw so many temples dedicated to many strange gods is that I want to declare to the entire world today among those temples he saw one dedicated to the unknown God the other gods had names except the one referred to as the unknown God you men of Athens I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious for as I pass by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar which, with the inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore they ignorantly worshipped him, declare I unto you. Paul claimed that the unknown God belonged to him. He continued to tell them that God who made the world and all things therein, seeing that, that he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, neither is he worshipped with men's hands, seeing he gives you all life and breath and all things. For in him we live and move and have our beings. He declared that the so-called unknown God is the real God.